Have you ever wondered exactly what is inside a GarageBand iOS file? Well, in this video, we're gonna take a look. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete, and this is Studio Live Today, where I help you create, record, and release your best music. And if you use GarageBand on your iPhone or your iPad, you've probably wondered over time exactly what it is that makes up all of those files in your .band GarageBand project file. So in this video, I thought we would jump into a project file and take a look. So here we are in the Files app in GarageBand. Now, if you want to learn how to use the Files app to manage all of your iOS files, I've got a heap of videos, which I will link down there and up there right now. But let's jump into GarageBand. And here on my iPhone in GarageBand, I've got uh, two of my latest projects here. Well, it's actually the same project. So my new song called 6 and 8, I've got version 3 and I've got version 4. And what I've actually already done is zipped those up into a zip file. The reason I do that is if we want to actually preview what's inside these files, we can't do that from the .band file because .band files will just open straight in GarageBand, whereas zip files we can preview here. Now, if you want a quick refresher on how to zip up here in iOS, you can use the Shortcuts app, and I have another video which I'll link up there and down there right now. But very quickly, you just go select, you tap on the file here that you want, you hit the little button in the bottom left, the share button, and if you have your shortcut set up here, you'll have a zip shortcut and that will zip the file straight up. You can save it into the same location and you're good to go. So I've already done all of that because it does take a while. These are fairly large files, especially this version four, and I'll show you exactly why that is in just a moment, but they're already zipped up here. So if I want to preview the contents of these files, all I need to do here in iOS is actually tap on the zip file like so. It will load up that zip file now, it will take a little bit of time to do this before it even brings up the preview option. So let's fast forward to that now. And here we go. It tells us that we've got uh, 59 files. It's 338.7 megabytes. And we can preview the content by tapping on, not surprisingly, the preview content button. This will go in and it will actually bring up and display all of the different files that we have in here. So it's given us file number one of 57. Now we can sort of swipe through these, but the easiest way is if you press up next to the title there, six and eight version three, if we tap on the three lines there, it will actually bring up this display. So this is a folder display of everything. And I've said before that dot band files are actually folders. They're folders full of files. And this is why they don't work when you try and sync them with things like Google Drive, things like iCloud, not iCloud, things like OneDrive, and things like Dropbox. They don't like it. They only like iCloud because that's Apple's world. So here are all the folders that we have. So going through here, we've got just some little files and it will tell you the file sizes as well. So we've got caches.nosync with just cache info in it. We've got this TI folder here and we've got all of these PNG images. So these are just our pictures of our tracks. So this is what GarageBand uses when you go in and you load up, say, your uh, your different tracks. And we'll show you on the PC in just a moment for some more detail. But this is just something that you can do quickly, even if you're not synced up to a PC. We can come down here. We've got contents, which is just one very small file. We've got all our media files. So here we've got Nice Room 01, 03, 04. They're my guitar files that I've actually recorded in here using the Nice Room. It puts our sampler files in here for some reason, even though I'm not using the sampler in this track at all, or maybe I added it at some point and then removed it. And we've got all of these, which are our actual WAV files, all of our Vox lead, which is all of the lead vocals, all of our Vox comp, which is our comp vocal lead as well. And we've got our background vocals as well. I just haven't renamed them. And these are using the names, not of the tracks, but of the audio. So the exact pieces of audio. And I'll show you the project afterwards and you'll see the correlation between those. So that's all of our audio. Finally, we have our output. So this is any time that we actually output it as a WAV file. It also saves a copy of that WAV file right here in the output folder as well. And then it's got a bunch of data files as well. So clearly the output there is what takes up a lot of our space. That's the outputted WAV file of, or MP3 or M4A file, sorry, of whatever you're actually putting out there. And then it's all of these files that are gonna be the majority because MIDI files and MIDI tracks won't take up much room at all. They're just all in those data files because they're using GarageBand's instruments. But when you record audio tracks, so your own microphone, your own guitar, your own uh, vocals, that is gonna take up quite a bit of space. And we'll show you when we jump over to the PC exactly how much space they take up. 
Okay, I mentioned very briefly at the start that we've got two versions of this track. We've got version three and version four. Now, those are not actually any different. I haven't added any more tracks, but one is 379 mega, one is 1.65 gigabytes, four times as big. So why is that the case? Well, I've got another video which will be linked at the end of this one and down in the description where I explain exactly why GarageBand files get so big. So check that one out. But for now, let's just dive in and I'll show you what additional files are in there because you might see these same files in your project. We're here inside the zip file of this version 4 track now. I've just skipped all of the opening because it took quite a while with such a large file. So we've got all of the same files here, but there's one folder down here that wasn't in the original one, and that is this one, the freeze files no sync. Now it's called no sync because it doesn't have to sync to iCloud because all of these files are just here to make playback smoother for GarageBand. So I'll get into more detail in the other video as I mentioned, but what it basically does is it renders out entire versions of every track so that when it's playing back, it can just play back those tracks, it freezes them, freezes those tracks so it can play them back without processing any effects or EQ or anything else. And we've still got our media down here intact because that is the stuff that will actually stay in there. All of these media files and all of these vocal files, uh, which will be in here regardless. So that is just the difference. And in case you see those, and that is the, a little bit of a hint as to why those files get so large. But now let's jump over onto the PC and take a look at these zip files in some more detail. So I've synced up my phone here just by plugging it into the USB cable. I've opened up iTunes and I'm gonna to go to file sharing. Now, I've got other videos about this, but if you haven't used file sharing before, it is pretty darn cool because anything that is in your, on my iPhone or on my iPad folder, on your iPhone or your iPad, you can actually get direct access to this way. So I've got a lot of files on there, which is why it took a few seconds just to pop up there. But this is everything that is on my iPhone on my GarageBand uh, folder. So we can actually come in here and find these files. Now, the ones that we actually want in this case are the ones that we were just looking at down there. So we're just gonna scroll down there. And yes, there's two scroll bars here just to be really useful. Uh, so we're gonna grab these two zip files and take a look at them. So I'm gonna click and then I'm gonna control click on the second one. Now down the bottom right here, we can click save. So we're gonna save these files out to a folder. Uh, we'll just pop them somewhere here on my drive. Yep, I can put them in my music, uh, my data music folder. We'll select that one and that will save them out. So you'll see at the top there, it's copying those two files across. They're pretty big, so it'll take a few moments. Once those are copied, we're going to jump in and take a look at them so we can see a little bit more about the file types and the sizes here in GarageBand. Oh, and while that's happening, bonus tip, this is a very cool way to back up your .band files here because you can see that you can also click and transfer over any of your .band files and that will transfer the whole contents across. And it is compatible as long as it's within those .band folders on your PC or your Mac. You can put them on your hard drive. Then when you want to use them again on your phone, you can transfer them straight back, open them up and you're good to go. Okay, so that is done. And here we have our two zip files right here on my desktop. So let's open up version three, which is the first one that we looked at and take a look at the files that we have inside here. So we're gonna go into the six and eight version three dot band file. Let's zoom that one in so we can take a little bit of a, a closer up look at these files. There we go. So we've got our same folders here. We've got our caches dot no sync contents, freeze files dot no sync. Now this freeze files dot no sync is empty. So this is that folder that has had all of those freeze files in version four that we'll look at in a moment. But the majority of our files are gonna be here in media that we saw before. So these are all of our media files. So all of the uh, different audio chunks. And again, this isn't the whole track. This is the actual audio file. So if you think of it in terms of each individual section, if you split it and you've got two files there because you can name them differently, those names are what correspond to what we have over in here. So we've also got sort of images and recording and sampler that are here in the media folder. The other one that's gonna have quite a bit in here is our output because every time we output it with a different name, it's gonna pop into here. And once again, we'll talk about that in more detail in the next video, which is gonna be all about the sizes that we have in here. But you can see here that you know, we've got a 59 uh, megabyte file there, which is our outputted uh, wave file of that. And then the majority of the file size is in here where each of these sections are somewhere between two meg up to the largest being a, the full track of vocal audio here, which also that was the guitar, which is 29 megabytes. So you can see there that uh, all the files are nicely organized, nicely arranged here in our zip file, uh, ready for us to, to go ahead and, uh, and use. Let's just take another look at the next one here. So this is this version 4.band file that we were looking at. And the main difference here is this group here. Now let's zoom these in so that you can take a bit of a closer look 
These are all AIF files, and they're all uh, around about, uh, I've lost the size that we had there before because I don't have them in the right view. Let's just go back to our details view. So they're all around you know, 30 meg, 75 meg, 57 meg, 49 meg. So you're not going to be able to see that in a lot of detail there on the screen, but they're fairly big files because these are the whole track. So yes, they're not all going to be the same because they're not going to have the same length of track, and they're not going to be exactly the same. But these are so that you can just play back. It can say it starts here, it ends here, it can play these AIF files back within GarageBand without having to do any processing at all. So there you go, there's a little bit of a closer look here in Windows, and you can do the same thing on your Mac, you can sync it up via iTunes, Make sure, load that up there in your folder, and then save a copy and have your backup, but then you can jump in and take a look at exactly what is inside your .band file, and you can even export out little chunks of that and play them back and, and do whatever you want there. And that is going to do it. I hope you found this interesting and this gave you a little bit of an insight to exactly what is hiding in those .band files that you have here in GarageBand. Thanks again for watching. If you do want to check out the next video in the series, that will be linked right down below and at the end of this one. And we've also got that full guide to using files here in iOS 11 and iOS 12 if you are new to how to do all of this file management stuff. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video. Hey, thanks for sticking around. Do you have any other tips or suggestions or comments? Well, you can leave those right down below in the comments. I'm always there and I love chatting to you down there. You can also subscribe to the channel by clicking or tapping on the Studio Live Today icon in the top right there or head to studiolivetoday.com for even more audio goodness.